Hi everybody, welcome to a new series of tutorials on Flip. Flip is a fantastic new app which can do simply manage samples, create melodies using an internal sequencer, applying effects and much, much more. Before I start, I have a number of codes to give away, so please check the video description uh, for instructions on how to enter the giveaway competition, but also check the comments section to ensure the competition is still running and to find out if you won a code. So, let's get started. If you loaded Flip, you should see a screen like this one. You might not have the same names under each pod, but it will be similar to this. So you will be in a pods mode, where we have nine pods, one to nine. If you click on the pod, you can produce a, a sound, of course, which is linked to the pod. Okay, let's get started. So on the top left, we have a help button. The help button is useful when you don't know uh, what a particular function control does. So you click on the exclamation mark, you have a blue flushing border, which uh, uh, reminds you that you are in help mode. Then click somewhere on the screen and you will have a descriptor, which will help you, of course, in learning how to use the application. Click on the X to close that descriptor. Let's click somewhere else. It will say Pods page here. And when you finish, just click again on the blue question mark to exit the help mode. Let's continue our exploration. You have uh, on the bottom a cog symbol. So if you click on it, you enter the settings of Flip. Starting from the top left, we have the tempo section. Here is where you set the tempo for uh, your song. You have a tap button. If you click on it several times, you can, of course, uh, set the tempo based on the amount of time between one click to the next. You can also click and hold on the tempo itself, then move up and down to increase or decrease the tempo. Or finally, you can use the plus sign to increase the tempo or the minus sign to decrease it. So let's go back to 100 bits per minute. Next, we have a metronome section. Here you can enable the metronome and you can also set the volume. Let's disable it for now. We have a swing option and here is where you can add groove to your own song. Next, we have underneath a set of options. The first one is the able to link, so to synchronize your own devices as they are playing. The next um, option is to enable background audio and important when you're running it with other application. The next one, if enabled, will allow you to play from the start position, for example, from the start of a button. But if you disable it, it will play from where you left it. Next, we have a MIDI recording auto-activated metronome, if it is set, which can be really handy. Let's scroll down as well to um, reveal more options. We have uh, next uh, the audio recording to record the multiple channel. So when you press on this symbol for the tape, you can uh, um, enable audio recording, and uh, which is useful, um, for example, if you want to record your own performance and export that performance as a WAV file. And if this option is on, it will produce at the end not only a master recording, but also stems for each of the channel. The next two are experimentals. The first one, if enabled, will allow you to change the uh, pitch as you press to the left and right within a pad. And the next one instead will allow you to change the velocity if you move, of course, uh, the click on the pad up and down on the Y axis. Lastly, we have a quantized recording to uh, be enabled or disabled when you are in the sequencer mode. I leave it enabled. Let's exit the settings option, just clicking on the cog symbol again. We have an undo function, we have a redo function, we have also a random um, function, which I will show you throughout the explanations, a recording of um, your performance, you click on it, 
it will start to play like so when you finish you click on it it will wait for the end of that bar uh, or press on that and if something has been recorded um, it will it will show you a menu which uh, uh, will allow you to um, export what you recorded but we'll come back to this when we created some buttons we have uh, a record button here and also a, a play button and when the two are combined you can record okay perfect let's move on now to the project menu okay let's go and uh, review the projects screen you access it through here inside here you can see a list of the projects some which comes by default like brain dance electra house etc some which i have created as well so um, you can create a new project just clicking on the new project link like so and it will say create a new project you will see it here as you scroll down uh, it has dates and it starts with proj for projects you have um, a button to access the store where you can acquire new uh, banks of sounds you can see what you have not purchased yet and what you purchase and of course you can restore any purchases useful when you reinstalled flip Underneath you see, as I mentioned, the list of projects. You can select them. When you select them, you load them as well. So it's very quick, instantaneous. You can select one and change the name, keep clicking on this pencil. Uh, so you can say TF like so, press enter, and it will change the name. And you'll have to scroll down to reveal it. You can duplicate it, selecting this button. You can uh, um, share it uh, with uh, um, for example other application or you can send it via mail etc and you can delete one if you don't need to use it so let's delete this one and also the previous project I created like so oh it says I cannot delete it of course because it is selected so let's select uh, this one SF, SFM and then let's delete this one and also this one and this one as well okay now let's move on to the sample screen here we are on the sample screen so first thing to note is that we have some uh, sub tabs the first one is sample we can have envelope EQ effect and also browse samples let's stick to the first one sample on the right hand side you have the nine pads and if you click on them you, they will produce a sound as you would expect they will play the corresponding sample let's select the sample number nine underneath you see uh, the waveform for that sample you can set the start for playing that sample and also the end as well like so you can record a new sample so click and hold test and you have a new sample test you can set again the new start to play the sample test test that's nice that's the end test like so you can click save of course and give it a name click on save and you can just give it a name like so um, you can also change the input gain if you prefer so a couple of things before I move to the next tab, the envelope tab. You can solo the track um, or the pad that you have selected, particularly useful if uh, you uh, have, for example, your composition playing in the background. And everywhere in the application where you see an S, it would be for solo. You can set it to play in reverse. Interesting. You can set it to be polyphonic or monophonic. Of course, if it is mono, only one sound will be played at the same time. So for example, uh, on poly, if I go to this screen, which is the sequencer and I select keys, I can play multiple ones. But if I go back and I select mono, I can only play one at the same time. So let's set it to polyphonic. I can change, of course, the pitch. Test, 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 test. Double click to set it to default, then I can change the gain as well. Test, 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 test. Double click to set it to default. 
Okay, perfect. Next, envelope. This is your typical like DSR. We can you can change your attack here. Test, 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 test. So it's a mover. You can change the pick. Test, 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 test. The decay as well, and the sustain. Test, 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 test. Let's put the pick higher. Test. And you can change the release, of course, if you want a shorter release. Test, 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 test. See, it changes how long it lasts. One interesting thing is that you have a, a, an initial value as well, which is really good, which is a starting point in terms of amplitude of your sample. Test, test, really nice. Next, we have a free EQ um, equalizer, free band equalizer. So you activate each band clicking on uh, each one of them. And of course, you need to activate it first. So just to show you again, is what it looks like at the beginning. You activate each band like so. Then you can move, of course, up and down. Test, 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 test. To change the EQ at that specific frequency. Test, 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 test. You can also change the type of curve, which is quite interesting. For example, this one, let's uh, make it into a dip. Test, test. And, and an, an interesting feature is also to activate the spectrum analyzer. Test, test. Which shows you uh, the waveform as it is played, test. which is really good. Okay, let's deactivate this one. Next, we have effects. There are four type of effects, bit crash, chorus, filter, and delay. So you activate in, pressing on, uh, uh, deactivate or on and off button and where there are these four white buttons you click and hold and you can change the position of the effects as well because it, it applies the left effects from the left to the right so let's uh, activate the brick crush here on with reduce we reduce the sample rate right. Right. Test, 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 test. Okay. we can also change the bits number of bits test, 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 test. And change the dry and wet um, setting. You have dry and wet settings for each of uh, the different effects. Let's try the chorus. And this is effectively doubling uh, your sample. Test, test. So let's set it to uh, zero. Test, 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 test. Let's increase the depth. Test, 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 test. Test, test. Let's change the speed. Test, test, test. And uh, you can definitely hear the change in speed. And you can, of course, again, apply dry and wet uh, settings. You can apply a filter. You can set your frequency and also resonance, which will change, uh, uh, will boost the frequency at the cutoff point. And uh, of course, your dry and wet setting as well. Test, 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 test. Next, we have a delay effect. At the moment, it is set to be synchronized, which therefore, as uh, I um, change the values, it will be synchronized based on bit per minute. But if I remove the sync, it will go by milliseconds. At the moment, I can apply in differently setting for the left channel and right channel. Test, 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 test. In this case, much uh, faster on the left channel and longer on the right channel. If I click on link, uh, I can apply only the change on the left channel and they will be replicated on the right channel. Test. I can change the feedback. Test, test, test. test. How long that tail will last, the dry and wet again settings. Test, 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 test. And I can also have a ping pong effect where uh, the feedback moves from the left to the right channel. Test, 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 test. And really interesting. Okay, let's deactivate that. And finally, we have uh, a browse tag. And this is where uh, um, 
you can see all uh, your samples. I have imported some of them using the import function, like so. Um, you have a folder here, which is called stock. You click on it to access the default uh, samples. Okay. If you want to load a particular sample, just uh, click on it. And then you can click and hold and move it to the corresponding pad and it will load it to that pad. Notice that the volume is quite high when you are selecting the uh, preview of the samples here. Of course, when they are applied to the pad, uh, additional settings, uh, which I will show you later, will be applied. You can also select a, a sample and click load and it will load it to uh, the corresponding pad. As I mentioned, you can import one. You select import, and then the user screens will come out when you can browse to a location and a file to import. You can access a store to uh, purchase additional samples. If you have one sample selected, you can uh, set it to favorite. And if it is favorite, of course, it is easier to identify. You click on it again to change to change it to be not favorite and then you can of course rename a sample and also delete a sample as well one interesting thing to look at is the random function this dice function with pad number nine selected if i click on it it will choose a random sample from the list try again snap try again and so on and so forth. Okay, um, I'll see you at the next uh, um, part where we look at the pod screen. Okay, welcome to the pod screen. In the pod screen, you have nine pods. On each of the pod, you have an associated sample. So when you click on the pod, you play the sample. Now, there are a couple of things to also mention. If you go on the settings and if you scroll down and you enable these two experimental features, pads enable pitch for pad and also velocity for pads, what will happen is that um, when you are back on the pad screen, um, if you move, depending on uh, the position of your mouse, moving up and down, will decrease the velocity, moving left and right will change the pitch. And this is very much your preference if you like to have that active or not. I don't actually like it active, so I leave it off. So one interesting feature here as well is that you can uh, uh, randomize the selection of uh, a sample. So you click on the pad and you click the dice and you have a nice new sample and you click click again and change okay if you click and hold on the dice it will randomize the selection for all nine pads the other thing that is useful to know in uh, these um, in this pad screen is that you can record your performance so let's click uh, the record button and then play Okay, I stopped now, and if we go to the next screen, which is the screen this is related to the sequencer, you can see actually that for the the performance has been recorded for pad number two and also for pad number one. But we'll come back to these uh, next when we look at the sequencer view. Okay, sequencer mode. In sequencer mode, as you can see, you have the visual of a piano roll here. At the moment, we don't have selected anything on the top. There are three tabs. If you click on keys, you see a keyboard. If you click on velocity, you can change the velocity setting for each of the notes. And you can also automate effects, which I'll come back to it in a moment. So key again on the keyboard, you can play the sample. The highlighted note is the root note, which is determined automatically. 
So you have two keyboards. You can change independently up and down the um, the octave, and you can also set it to play velocity, like so. Okay, let's click keys again to go back to the play uh, to the piano roll. Here you can solo the track that uh, you are working with, and you can select the, the part of track you're working with. With the moment that it is on part number one, but you can go also on part number two. Okay, you can select to quantize or not the notes, as you can see. You can continue recording, click on recording, play, and then uh, it, it, you keep recording and. Uh, uh, I suppose you go back to the pads and play again. Or what you can do is also add the notes. You just click um, on the piano roll and you create an event or the particular note. You can move up and down to scroll and you can also scroll uh, horizontally as well. This determines the length of the looping. Okay, there are four bars. That's the limit at the moment in flip. You can click and hold at the end here. You can expand it to zoom out. Okay. Perfect. Let's go back to uh, the beginning like so, and you can also uh, use the handle here as well to um, maximize, as you can see here, uh, the view. Let's go back to the normal view. All right, a couple of other things as well while well, we are in the piano roll. So you can uh, create two notes like that. You can click and select the different notes like so. And, and therefore, if you click then on the left hand side of the note, you can actually move them. If you click on the right hand side, you change the length. As you can see, as you are moving with a selection or you're working with a selected notes, you have a context menu like so. And this enables you to delete the notes, quantize them, duplicate them, and it will duplicate these notes in the next uh, uh, measure. Copy them, so you can click copy, and it will say copy the notes, long tap to paste. So you can click somewhere here, and it will paste. Remember, if you have a, a different, more than one note, in where you click will determine the highest note in which you are pasting, okay? And of course, you can also randomize the notes, and this will randomize the timing, not the uh, pitch, like so. Okay, let's delete for now, and let's remove these notes as well. Okay. Um, you can, of course, uh, um, zoom out and change the size of the looping, like so. Okay, at the moment, let's leave it uh, there to one measure. Also, let's go to um, the hi-hats, if I remember well, part number five. Okay, perfect, and let's introduce some hi-hat. The dot here in black is, again, the root note for the sample, which is determined automatically. So let's do something like that. And this time do it manually instead of recording it and in real time. Now, the other thing you can do in the piano roll, you can now go to velocity. And for each of the notes, you have the velocity here. So we can perhaps change the velocity to create an interesting effect. And let's play. Okay, let's go in here and ensure that the volume is down to zero. And um, also, let's ensure that we deactivate also the metronome for recording there. Let's um, select another pad. Um, for example, mm, uh, the kick drum, like so. Let's uh, um, zoom out a bit and let's um, uh, select velocity again and change the velocity higher on the first and the third and lower here. And let's play again. And you can hear the difference now. Next, you can uh, um, have automation as well, which is fantastic. Um, so you can automate. Um, here, uh, if you selected the sample in terms of volume, pitch, reverse, and start of the sample, you can automate uh, parameters for envelope, the attack, the decay, and release. For the bit crash, you reduce the sample rate, the, the bits, the dry and wet effect. 
and you can also automate the color speed depth and dry and wet and also the uh, delay in terms of time feed and dry and wet additionally you can also automate the filter where you have the resonance here uh, the frequency and dry and wet so um this is independent of course from keys and velocity so in terms of what you set from mvp perspective so for example let's uh, uh, turn this on which is the equivalent of turning on in the sample um, effects here okay let's go back uh, to the uh, sequencer and now what we can do is we don't have quantize on but we can automate for example frequency uh, like so we can draw something so let's play I can also quantize look what happens and I can also randomize using the dice which gives you a very interesting effect Of course, this is on the kick drum. If you want to delete the automation, click and hold, and it will delete it. Or, of course, you can turn it off, or you double click also on the frequency to delete it as well. If you don't have anything like so, and you have quantize on, and you use the dice like so, next time that you remove quantize, it will connect to different points instead of being uniform. And this is in a nice, interesting way to create effects. As I mentioned, you can act on filter, uh, delay, chorus, bit crash, the envelope itself, and also sample parameters, which makes it really, really interesting. Okay, next is the mixer. Okay, time to talk about the mixer, as you would expect. It is a mixer, so you can change the volume of gain for each of the different pads moving up and down. You can set also the pump to left and right. You can also introduce reverb as a send effect. And then you can also solo or mute the track. So let's play what we have built so far. And you will notice that the hi-hat have a low volume. So let's increase the volume. And let's play around a little bit with uh, some reverb and also pump. Okay, and this is the mixer. So let's move on to the master effect. Okay, here we are, master effect. So in this uh, um, screen, on this part of uh, Flip, you have a number of options. You can enable reverb for where you set in the mixer to have some send reverb as an effect. And here you can change the room size, low pass filter, the high pass filter. You can also add some decay and also a pre-delay. So let's play a little bit with that. Of course, you have two types of compressors as well. You have a maximizer, where you can change the compress ratio, the boost and the presence, but you also have a limiter, where you can change the boost and the release. So let's play with those as well.
Okay, straightforward. And finally, under master effect, you have also another equalizer, which works exactly in the similar way of the equalizer that we have seen in here under the samples view. So we you can enable it, of course, you can enable the free band, and then you can change them up and down. And you can, of course, change the type of curve. Of course, the main difference is that this equalizer is um, uh, taking effect on the overall uh, sounds being played, not just a sample. And of course, you can see also the spectral analyzer. Okay, next is the arrangement. Okay, arrangement. In arrangement, you can take patterns that you have created and, and put them in order to chain them really together to create your composition, your song. As you can see, we have one pattern and you can create 16 patterns. So if you click on that pattern, it will play. Okay, so if I want to create a second pattern, let's say, for example, I want to copy pattern one, I click and hold the pattern one and I move it to the second location and I have copied pattern one into pattern two. Now let's modify in pattern two so that it is different. We'll select it, we'll stop the play. And um, actually, before I move into that, as you notice, when I click on a pattern, it will start for play. If you want to select a pattern, a pattern without playing, click and hold, like so. Let's go back to the sequencer and let's uh, bring up uh, pattern number eight. Yes, where I believe I have a base. Perfect. And let's create um, a melody, a simple one. Something like that. Let's audition it. we still have a pattern one selected. So let's go to the arrangement and select pattern two. Okay, if I'm not happy, I can delete it. In order to delete it, I need to click and drag it to the bin here. Um, if I want to chain pattern, I click and hold and I move it to this area. So I have now pattern one, then pattern two, then I play again pattern one and then pattern two. If I'm not happy with one pattern in the order, I click and move it to the bin again. If I want to insert another pattern, I click and hold and I can insert it between the patterns which are already um, included in the order or simply add one like that. When I finished, I can export at the composition. I can export it as a master or create a different stems. And that is how you export your composition. Okay, and finally, next, we are going to look at performance. Okay, performance. In performance, you, as you can see, you still have the 16 patterns, okay? And you can select them in terms of how you want them to be played. But then additionally, you can act on these controls. So for example, you can set the um, filter here, like so. So for, let's, for example, play a pattern. And then act on the control here. Or you can change the uh, reverb and get all the pitch. Or you can add randomness to uh, um, to the pads which are selected. So let's try some of these. At the moment, these controls act on all the tracks, but if you click on the pin here, you can select which uh, 
uh, pad or track they are uh, impacting or influencing and by which amount is changing the slider here. Okay, so for example, on the randomness, what is good instead of having them all, we can actually say act on the first, second, and the fifth. So I have kick drum, snare, and hi hat. So let's try. Okay, that's nice. And lastly, you have a lock here. At the moment, if you move up a slider and let go, it will go back to its initial value. If you want to retain the values that you set, you click on the lock. So next time that you move it, it will not go back to the original position, unless you click again on the lock. Um, so the controls here on the performance are, are really nice because what you can do is uh, click on the tape here, start the recording, and like, uh, like I demonstrated in a moment, and then change the controls in real time as well as changing the buttons. And of course, when you finished, this time you have something and the file has been zipped up and now you can share it uh, um, or not or click cancel. Okay, these conclude the uh, tutorial on Flip. Thank you. See you next time. Bye.